The first thing that I'm going to mention is the Arabic language. Now I say this because it's more detailed and precise than the English language. And Arabic itself has more words, more vocabulary that it can't necessarily fully translate into English. So the first thing I'm going to show you right now is me learning it. I'm going to show you like systematically what I did first and how I'm progressing and where I'm going to try and go to. So the first thing I did, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, I'm learning Arabic. This was at the start of the year. So January, I'm relearning it. Now I could have had the ego and said, you know, I already know how to read it like good enough. I don't need to relearn it. And what I didn't realize is that I could read it, but it wasn't as good and as fluent because there were some words like, for example, this one. Oh, I'll show you right now here. When they joined together, I would always be like stuck while reciting. And I didn't realize the value of being able to write in Arabic and also read it because when it goes hand in hand, your reading of the Quran becomes better. Your memorization becomes better because there are certain words that you've seen before already and repeating them already. You're like, oh, I remember this word in the Quran that I was trying to, you know, write and also learn. So there's a way that this way is just really helpful. So I'll show you more. Like here, you can see that scene. I'm trying to learn each like combination and then doing a bit of practice. And it did take quite a while for me to finish it. Like it took me a month or so. And this is going to be really important for anyone, really, if they're trying to seek knowledge, because there are books written by scholars or people of great like intellect in the different languages. And if you don't, you know, know them, know the language, you can't really access them and you'll have to rely on a translation to explain it for you. So here again, you can see me finishing it. This was when I finished it. I look really dark, like ignore that. But you can see I finished it like here. And eventually once I finished it, I moved on to Tajweed. Now, once I could read it, obviously now I want to be able to perfect my reading of the Quran. Now, this also leads me on to my point where Arabic is not the final goal, right? The final goal isn't to converse and speak in Arabic. The final goal is to understand the Quran and to be able to read it properly in a correct and measured way. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran somewhere, I'll have it on the screen right now somewhere. So, yeah, so Tajweed. This is when I first started. Um, this was also near the start of the year. So I was doing, okay. So for the Arabic, by the way, I was using AMAU to learn it. And for the Tajweed, I was using a, uh, Quran 101. I'll have both of the links to both of them in the description. So the first thing I started off with was Mad Mutasil and Mad Munfasil. So it's like the different mad rules. And I kept going, right? I kept. After I learned like all of the rules, I was doing like a little bit each day. I got onto writing notes on each one. You can see here, like writing notes on each rule and then going back to it each day, trying to remember it. And this was really helpful because before when I used to memorize Quran, I didn't use it in, I didn't memorize it with correct pronunciation. I didn't memorize it with correct Tajweed. It was sounding a bit funny. And I had a guy from my Discord server, which is also in the description, you know, check my recitation. And this is something very important as well. I would say you should have someone to check the recitation, go in person and check it. And that can be very helpful for you. And, you know, here are more pages. This was towards the end of February. So I was making, you know, good progress. I was pretty like happy. And then once I, this was like the last page or so, I didn't cover a hundred percent like every single Tajweed situation, but I covered everything I need to know to be able to read properly. So here's like one of the final pages. Here are all of like some of the stop symbols. Here are some of the like uh, different, like, you know, words that I was learning and yeah. So after I finished Tajweed, I moved on to learning different Arabic words. Now, at the same time, I was still, you know, reading Quran. It's not like I stopped reading Quran completely. No, I would still read it, but I wasn't like, 
reading it in Arabic much. It was only to practice. Now, once I had Tajweed down, I was reading Quran way more because I could understand more of how to say certain words. I could practice and apply what I had learned from here. So the next thing was Arabic, like learning the language. And again, I used AMAU. And uh, this is how I started. So you can see here. Oh, that's not the first page, is it? Oh, it is. So yeah, so I'm writing notes. Now, I would say this isn't the best way to learn Arabic. The best way is to actually go and speak to people who know the language. And I know some people who do know the language and I practice with them sometimes. And that's better than just writing it down. However, you can't really just do one. I would say doing both is very helpful. And that gets me on to these flashcards. So what I did was I would learn each word. So these are the words that I was learning. And what I would do is on the back page, I would uh, write, you know, each word down. And then throughout my day or throughout like the week or something, I would go look at the flashcard and I would be like, okay, what am I looking at today? Right. Let's say I'm doing, um, well, let's just do, say I'm doing the first lesson. So what I would do is I would try and say, okay, what's paper? And then I would think, okay, paper, waraka, right? I don't know if my pronunciation could be really bad, but I'm still learning, right? Waraka, right? Warakatun. Okay. And then at the back, I would check, is that correct? Yes or no? And then I would continue, you know, sayara, uh, uh, you know, I would just continue down the list, going down, rajul, rajulun, you know, keep going, and then making sure that I get every single word down correctly. So, I would continue doing this, like for each lesson. I think this is really like good because like checking each, you know, words, you know, doing it in a way like this is quite fun because, you know, you could do it in a way that's really boring and then not really feel motivated or disciplined enough to continue doing it. But if you do it in a way that you enjoy and, and in a way that, you know, you find really helpful, that's a better way, at least to me, that you can understand the language and also make progress. So I have three Qur'ans, however, I'm going to show you two right now. And I have these two. So this one, if you want it, I can show you closer so that you can take a screenshot and then, or you can search it and pause the video right there. So this one, I actually use it just for reading. Um, so that I, because I'm not an Arabic speaker, I still don't fully know the Arab, the language yet. However, you can see Surat Al-Isra, one of my favorites. Absolutely love this surah. So you can see on one side is Arabic and on the other side is English. And what this does is that it's just for the sake of actually, you know, being able to know what the Quran is saying, not to fully understand it because I would say that obviously to fully, fully understand it, it's better to watch a video on tafsir by a scholar, by a student of knowledge that knows what they're doing, that's qualified. And you can understand it way better there. Yeah, so you can see here that the Arabic is just fully on both pages. And why this is so good is because before I couldn't even memorize like one ayah a day. And even if I did, you know, it was quite small. However, as I built up consistently, and I stopped like memorizing on my phone and I switched to the mushaf. It was so much better because with the mushaf, if you listen to your favorite reciter, now this is very important. You listen to your favorite reciter the day before or while you're memorizing. And then you go into your room, you shut the door, you open the window, and then you grab your mushaf and you read. You will find it so much easier. You set a timer for like one or two hours, zero distractions, a hundred percent focus on the Quran. As time goes on, you will be able to memorize more. And I just find it so much more better because being able to memorize Quran with a mushaf, you know, going to do wudu and then going to sit down and read, it's a good feeling. I would say as well, go and check the tafsir of the Quran, go and watch scholars like lectures on it and try and, you know, apply certain verses to your life. There's a, there's a verse in Surah Al-Furqan where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, no, it's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will have said or has said in regards to 
people abandoning the Quran. I'll have it on the screen anyway, so you can just like see it for yourself. But you can see that people, we, what's the point of reading it? And then you're not even applying what's being said. You know, you're not even doing what the Quran is instructing you to do. It's like, there's, there's no point, is it? You know, if you're doing it, for example, to please a person's father, for example, I see the trend. This is a bit of a side run, but I see the trend of people trying to impress Fatima's Baba, right? This, some, this is something that needs to stop because if you are going to be reading the Quran, imagine your intention now, memorizing the Quran to become a Hafiz. It's no longer, I want to be a memorizer of the Quran to apply it to my life, to teach others, to help others, to achieve the, pr the pleasure of Allah. Now it's like, I want to memorize Quran so I can, you know, get married and I can impress Fatima's dad while in Salah and leading it. And this is something very dangerous because a minor shirk, riya, is something that is not even a joke. There's a hadith about uh, people coming on the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds. Imagine mountains of good deeds and they're all getting wiped away. You know, the first three people coming uh, on Yom al -Qiyama, being thrown into Jahannam. Muslims, can you believe that? Muslims. So that's something that we really need to take into consideration. So when it comes to a general read of the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sealed Nectar, very, very common book. Everyone's recommending it, but it's for good reason. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Some of the things in here are not fully authentic. Some of the hadiths here are da'if, are weak. And, you know, but the good thing is that you can check all of the hadiths. Like it has a reference list on the bottom. So that's not really a problem for me. So for this, it's just a general read. It's not a study of the book as of now, because like I can't do too many things at once. You know, everyone has priorities. Everyone has things that they must do. However, at the same time, it's not like any content relating to the Sira that I see. I would just ignore it. You know, you can still watch YouTube lectures, things like that on the Sira. However, you can't do everything at once because, you know, if you have different things that you must do in your life that you must attend to, you can't, you know, try and balance everything at once. So the last one is Tadim Al-Ilm by Sheikh Saleh Ibn Abdullah. That was quite hard to say, but it goes over the etiquette of seeking knowledge, something that a lot of people skip over for some reason. But I think it's very important. Because when you seek knowledge, you have to have a general understanding of how you want to go through it, how you want to keep your intentions pure, how you want to learn and benefit, how you want to manage different things. And it's better than this entire video, I'm pretty sure. Because, you know, learning from people who are like way above you is good. But also being able to apply it through their books and through, you know, going through seeking knowledge and how you can direct yourself in a way that is pleasing to Allah is very helpful. And, you know, especially with Riyah that I mentioned before, you know, doing something to impress others. It's very, very common on social media. Like we probably like from a general standpoint, we think when we look at social media and we look at these student of knowledge and some of these people, we would normally just think, oh yeah, they're doing it for the sake of Allah, but no one knows but Allah. So you have to be very careful and making sure that your intention stays pure only for the sake of Allah is definitely very important. So that's about everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.